Bueno, y desde la Castilla más profunda nos vamos a ir de viaje, un viaje largo que es igual que el viaje que ha hecho Kevin eh, en su vida. Ha estado en cocinas como Arzac, ha estado en La Broche eh, y en muchos más sitios como Daniel de Nueva York, hasta que aterrizó en Bali. Y en Bali arrancó con su proyecto más personal, Cuca, y hoy nos trae un poco ese reconocimiento de la despensa a Indonesia. Bienvenido, Kevin Cercas. Gracias. Caixo. Ladies and gentlemen, chefs, members of the media, distinguished guests. I know what you're thinking. ¿Quién coño es este? My name is Kevin, and this is Budi. Say hello, Budi. Oh, <laughs> all the way from Bali. Bali is one of the 18,307 beautiful, fascinating islands of Indonesia. See for yourself the magic of Indonesia. So that's Indonesia. <clears throat> Indonesia has been my home for the last seven years, but I've been cooking all my life. And after learning in some of the world's best kitchens, I was broke. So 13 years ago, I moved to Asia to take on my first job as a chef. I was so excited for this big opportunity at running a kitchen. I cooked Western food for Asian customers. They hated it. They called it food without flavor. It was, it was a total disaster. A disaster that forced me to learn about the powerful, exciting flavors of Southeast Asia. A disaster that changed the way I cook and the way I would look at food forever. And a disaster that gave us an idea to open KUKA. So, what do we do in KUKA? What do we do in KUKA? Learning from my gigantic mistake I knew my food needed more flavor. So the idea was to take inspiration from the most delicious food, the most delicious food I had ever eaten. Based our dishes on the most delicious things we had ever eaten, things like chipperones in Suntinta, tacos in Mexico, Tore Karage in Japan. The idea was to import absolutely nothing, to import no ingredients from anywhere, to literally use the most humble, local Indonesian ingredients, okay? Things that you can find at any traditional market. 
it didn't make sense to import anything when there was so much available within Indonesia. Now, the challenge with using these local ingredients was our customers. 50% of our guests came from Asia. Singapore, Taiwan, Korea, Indonesia, etc., etc. They found local Indonesian ingredients boring and cheap. The other 50% of our customers were Westerners. And even though they were excited and they found local ingredients exotic, they were scared. They were scared to eat Indonesian food that they didn't understand. So what we needed to do in Kuka was animate those ingredients. We needed to bring new life to this boring, cheap market produce. And we needed to take away the fear. So Asians would get excitement and Westerners comfort. How the hell to do that? How to make something exciting and comfortable? I brought my four favorite ingredients to show you. First ingredient, chili. Chili is the most important product in the Indonesian cooking. And Bali has three types of chili. Chabe Rawit, Chabe Bali, and Chabe Lombok. Only fresh, never dried. And the smaller the chili, the deadlier the heat. And that heat is highly addictive. It's critical to an Indonesian's perception of something being delicious. You take somebody like Budi, for example, you take away the chili, you take away the flavor. So what we love about chili is that burning sensation. And we use chili in kuka to gently warm your mouth. We use it in small amounts in a dish to give a more sensorial experience. But, but chili can burn your face off. You eat this, hospital. So what we needed to do was we needed to remove most of the heat and keep all the flavor. And keep all the flavor. The inspiration for our dish is this. Satay. Traditional Indonesian street food. Chunks of meat, marinated, and grilled over coconut charcoal. The idea was simple. To take this whole chili and make it taste like that delicious satay. Step number one, the chili. Remove the heat. So seeds out. Step two, remove the skin. So we blowtorch the chili. And you have to blowtorch the chili after you remove the seeds. If you blowtorch it before, you never get rid of the heat. Blowtorch the chili, ice water, and peel. Step three for flavor. We're gonna pickle the chili. So we're gonna go vinegar, water, salt, sugar, bloop, three months. For the meat, the satay, a key was dead. Chicken. So chicken leg, lemongrass, garlic, ginger, lemon peel, lemon leaf, fresh coconut, and sweet soy sauce called ketchup manis. This we chop, mix together, we get this. This mixture 
booty is going to stuff inside the pickled chili. We then brush the chili with coconut oil for texture, moisture, flavor. And this we bake 150 Celsius for eight minutes. And we get these. After they're cooked, we're going to brush it in charcoal oil for smoky barbecue flavor. And a whole chili with the flavor of traditional Indonesian street satay, presented the same way as we found chili in the traditional market. Our first dish, chili chicken satay. <laughs> Second ingredient, kluak the seed of a fruit. Now the trees that produce this fruit are totally wild. They're found in mangrove swamps throughout Indonesia. It takes 15 to 20 years for a tree to produce fruit. That's a long bloody time to make fruit. And each fruit contains 20 to 30 of these seeds. Now the fresh seed is deadly toxic. It's full of hydrogen cyanide. So to make it edible, you boil it in water, you rub it in coconut ash, you wrap it in banana leaves, and you bury it in the earth for 40 days to ferment. The fermentation changes the seed from white to black and releases the toxin. It's considered an art form, and it's done by very few people. Indonesia is one of the last producers of kluak in the world. Kluak is a spice, and it's used for very old traditional Indonesian recipes. There are no new ideas for kluak. The young chefs of Indonesia are scared of its deadly toxin, and the grandmothers of Indonesia have no culinary aspirations to do something new. What we love about kluak is its delicious super umami flavor. It tastes like dark chocolate, black olive, and mushroom. It's considered by connoisseurs to be the Asian version of truffle. But it can kill you, so that sucks. Also, anything you cook with kluak becomes black and ugly. So we needed to find a way to make it pretty and take away the fear. The inspiration for our dish is this, croquettes. Everybody loves croquettes. And the idea was to make this scary, ugly kluak with the comfort of a classic croquette. First step, the kluak. We soak the seeds in water for five days to release the excess toxin and to make the shell soft. Buddy's gonna crack the shell open. And we get this like a black gummy bear. This is then dried in the sun and ground to a powder. <clears throat> this powder is the way we discovered kluak in the mountains of Indonesia in a market in Toraja. And to use it, we're gonna take onion and garlic and black pepper We're going to caramelize it. We're going to add the spiced kluak. 
We're then going to add rice flour, grated potatoes, milk, and barbecued spring onions, and boil everything to thicken the mixture. Once it's thick, we have this, and we're going to smoke the mixture. So coconut charcoal. Oil, one hour. You don't have an hour. We're then going to scoop the mixture. Form it, we bread it. And we deep fry it, 180 Celsius for three minutes. We get these. We're going to dust the croquettes with a bit of cocoa powder. And cluac with the comfort of croquettes. Third ingredient, krupuk, a cracker. Indonesia has the largest variety of these crackers in the world. Traditionally eaten as a snack, krupuk are made by pounding seafood, like prawn, fish, or squid, to a paste, using a traditional mortar and pestle. Once it becomes a paste, you season this with tapioca flour, garlic, and seasoning, and mix to form a dough. You shape the dough, you dry it, well, shape the dough, you steam it until cooked, dry it in the sun, deep fry it, and it puffs up, and you get these, crackers. What we love about krupuk is its crispy, crunchy texture. The name krupuk actually comes from the sound it makes when eaten. Huh? But they're dry. They're very dry. They're very dry. And, and they're flavorless. So we needed to give them moisture and flavor. The inspiration for our dish is this a lollipop. Do you remember how excited you were as a kid to get one of these? Or how sad you were if you didn't? So the idea was to make that krupuk with the excitement of a lolly. First step, the krupuk. For the batter, We beat egg whites with butter, little bit of icing sugar, flour, garlic and ginger. For the shape, parchment paper cut to a circle. Booty is then gonna spread the batter on the paper. For the lolly, we're now going to start with our garnishes. Sliced red chili. Then we're going to do small fillets of dried fish called terigiri. They're actually fillets of fish. Check this out. They're fillets of fish. This is not a whole fish. It's, it's a whole little tiny fish that's boiled in salted water and dried in the sun, and the fillets are removed. And then we're going to add curry leaves. 
for texture. I keep pinchal oyster, porfa. For texture, we've taken grains of rice and slowly roast them to golden brown. We then smash that rice to crumbs. And these crumbs we discovered in southern Kalimantan. This is used as a breading for traditional fish in the villages of Kalimantan. And we're going to use it for texture on our cracker. So Buddy's going to sprinkle the roasted crumbs of rice. And this whole thing we're going to bake 160 Celsius, 15 minutes. When it comes out of the oven, we have these. For moisture, we're going to take water, vinegar, honey, boil. As soon as it's boiled, we're going to add roasted golden fried shallots. We cover it one hour and puree. We get this shallot jam. Buddy's going to put the dots of shallot jam on the lolly. And Krupuk with the excitement of a lolly. Last ingredient, papaya. Papaya and all parts of the plant have been used in Indonesia for centuries in traditional medicine. The unripe green fruit is also used in hundreds of preparations. Soups, salads, sauces, curries, stir fries, you name it. But fully ripe, like this one, nothing. They do nothing. They peel it and they put it in their face. That's it. What we love about papaya is they're delicious in Indonesia. I mean delicious. It's like the sweet version of avocado. But Asians find it boring and it has an annoying glue that always makes it stick together. The inspiration for our dish is this, apple crumble. Apple crumble is a classic Canadian dessert, a dish I grew up on, a dish my grandma made. And the idea was simple, to make this papaya with the experience of eating that apple crumble. So the first step for the papaya is to cut it in half. We would then remove all of the seeds and even these seeds in Indonesia, you can use these. You can dry these and use them like you would black pepper as a spice. We would then peel the papaya and cut it in quarters. We get this. Now, I was telling you before about the glue. If you take a papaya and you cut it into two chunks, like this, you put this in the chiller for an hour, you have this. Sticks together, like glue. Even if you puree the hell out of it in a blender, and you put it into an insert, it becomes a solid, like membrillo. Fascinating. 
So we had to find a way to use this annoying glue. And the idea was if we take the papaya and we slice it on a mandolin into thin strips, and we lay those strips flat like this, a key porfa. Booty is going to roll those strips. It takes time if you want it nice. Awesome. And you, end, and you end up with this. For the crumble, we're going to start with the bread pudding mixture. For the bread pudding mixture, we're going to juice apples with whole eggs, cinnamon, raisins, coconut sugar, and bread puree. We get this. This we're going to put into a baking mold. We sugar the papaya. Put it on top of the mixture. And we bake 160 Celsius for 18 minutes. We get this. The garnishes for the crumble, we're going to do with all the little pieces we don't use. We do a jam of papaya, chunks of papaya, water, lime juice, sugar, reduce, puree. We're then going to do a coconut cream. So fresh grated coconut. This one goes into a fine strainer bag, and we're going to squeeze out the water. This water, we season with icing sugar. We put it into a siphon. And it comes out like this. For the crumble, dark chocolate cake. One more. Dark chocolate cake dried and smashed. Then we're going to do crispy leaves of mint. So we take a plate, we wrap the plate in plastic wrap. Can you see that? No? We wrap it in plastic wrap. We then spray with vegetable oil. We dust with icing sugar. We put mint, leaves of mint. Microwave, one minute. We get these. You put the, crum the crumble in the center. Perfecto. Mint. Booty's going to add the leaves of mint. Deep breath. Take your time. And our last, 
Our last dish, papaya with the experience of eating a traditional apple crumble. So our last dish, papaya crumble. So four local Indonesian ingredients. Things you can find at any traditional market. Animated and given new life. No longer boring or scary. For more dishes, Vacaciones, Bali, comer en cuca. Eh, perdón, y quiero decir gracias a dos, a dos personas muy importantes. Primero, mi mujer. Ella tiene una cabeza grandísima. Y, y eh, gracias muchísimo por hacer todo tu talento para el restaurante de nosotros. Y el segundo, gastronómica. Gastronómica, muchísimas gracias por la oportunidad. Estoy aquí hoy. Hasta 16 años yo empiezo a trabajar en San Sebastián como stagiaire en restaurant Orzac. 16 años. Para, para 16 años yo tengo esta cosa en mi cuello por el amor lo que yo tengo para el País Vasco y para el restaurante Arzac y que sueño, la verdad, estoy aquí hoy con vosotros para presentar los ideas, lo que tenemos en Cuca. Muchísimas gracias, eh, Gastronómica Escaragasco. Thanks, thanks a lot, Kevin. See you in Bali. Yeah. Or here eating chipirones or croquetas or whatever. Uh, yeah, party at my house. Thank you.